Krampus, Harmony Shadow, Chapter 1, Prologue. It was a chilly day in November when Comic-Con came to my city and I decided, you know what, I'm gonna cosplay. Oh, how I hated that decision now. Oh, whoops, where are my manners? My name is Vartile Shadowmaker. You see, I wasn't like other con-goers, while everyone usually went with the coolest or most popular beings of fantasy. I decided to play as Krampus from the 2015 movie Krampus. Now I know what you're thinking, this guy just went in in a random demon mask with horns and fake fur, and that's where you're very wrong. I made an exact replica of the suit, beard, chains, and rusty bells from the Krampus movie including the old man mask and horns through the hood. I even managed to track down cloven hoof shoes from someone in the furry community, don't ask. I even managed to get the claw fingernails correct and soon I arrived at the con and started stalking around full Krampus. Safe to say, I drew a lot of attention. It's not every con that you see someone who's fully cosplaying as the literal shadow of Saint Nicholas, but there I was. I should have known something was up the moment I started walking around the vendor booths, but I didn't pay much attention. I was having too much fun snarling and talking demonically with a bunch of spoiled brats. But as I walked past a particular booth, I couldn't help but overhear an arguments. What do you mean you won't sell to me? The guy cosplaying as one above all. Exactly that, said the ragged old man who was dressed as the old man from Wasteland 3. There's already one that I've sold to and I don't have anything like what you're asking for. The old man finished. It seems that you're bothering the nice man. Now why don't you get out of here before you learn what happens to naughty boys and girls? I said in my demonic voice. Oh yeah? And what are you? He said, turning around getting quieter, as he realized who I was cosplaying as. Boo. I said, causing him to scream and run away in fear. I laughed in my normal voice as the merchant behind the table cackled with me. Thanks a lot, lad. He was really starting to irritate me. The old man said. He looked my costume up and down and asked. So, what can I do for you, Krampus? I smiled as I walked up to his table to look at his wares. He had spell books, devil fruit, the Necronomicon. But what caught my eye was the sack filled with toys and four rusted old bells. I picked up one of the bells and was amazed as it had a group von Krampus engraved on it. I was practically jumping from joy in my head. I'll take these four bells, and uh, what's in the sack? I asked, pointing to the old burlap sack that he had in a corner. Just some old toys. Would you like to take a look and see if they're to your liking? He asked. When I nodded, he walked over and picked up the sack, bringing it to the counter. I opened the sack and I literally almost fainted. The entire sack was filled with replicas of the evil toys Krampus had. How much for the bells in the sack of toys? I asked, as I reached for my wallet which I had hidden under the soot-covered red jacket that I was wearing. As I began to pull it off, the man waved off my attempt. No, no, that won't be necessary. He said, as his eyes lit up and a smile formed on his face. It's the least I could do to repay you for driving away that false one above all. That and it doesn't seem right to let Krampus go without being himself. He finished. Thanks! I said, picking up the bells and attaching them to my chains. As I did this, the merchant's smile turned almost demented. Well, thanks again, man. I appreciate it. I said, picking up the sack of toys and began to walk away. Oh, it was no problem. Enjoy your trip, Krampus. He said, cackling madly again. I turned around with a confused look in my eyes as I began to feel lightheaded. As I started to black out, I heard the merchant call out one last time. I can't wait to see what you can accomplish. Some things can't be changed. And with that, I finally blacked out. I groaned as I started regaining consciousness. Oh, my head. I said, putting a hand against my skull. Did anyone get the license plate of the truck that hit me? I finished rubbing the spot where my skull felt like a hammer was striking an anvil. I decided to open my eyes, and when I did, I instantly regretted that decision. I wasn't lying on the cold floor of the con, and I wasn't in a hospital room like I thought it would be. Instead, I was in a very dark-looking forest. Well then... I started, and instantly stopped as I was still talking in my demonic voice. This can't be right! I thought to myself as I tried to get to my feet. Once I was finally standing, I braced myself against one of the old trees in the forest, and started panning my head back and forth trying to locate a pond of any kind. I didn't see anything, but my ears picked up the sound of running water. I turned my head in the direction and heard it, and attempted to start walking towards it. I say attempted because I was hunched over, and when I put one of my hands against my back, I felt the wicker basket I had made specifically for my cosplay. Deciding it would be easier for me to walk out without such a great weight on my back, I attempted to take it off. It wouldn't budge when I turned my head and I noticed the burlap sack resting against the tree next to me. I don't know why I decided to grab it, I just did. I tried opening the basket and it actually opened, so I decided to put the sack in there instead of carrying it on my shoulder. I turned my head once more towards the stream and started trying to walk. I found that my movement was slow like my attempt at stalking a Comic-Con, and that my footfalls felt heavier. Once I reached the stream, I dropped to my knees and looked into the crystal clear stream to see the old man mask staring back at me. 
and I put my hands to where I knew my mask ended, but I felt nothing but skin and sharp nails. Looking back into the water, I realized there weren't any seams to indicate a mask, and when I attempted to pull off one of the fake nails, it wouldn't budge. At this point, I was starting to freak out, but once I lost it, I was looking down and lifted the coat from around my feet, and realized that the cloven hoof shoes that I was wearing turned into my real feet. I fell onto my ass, and started hyperventilating, until my memory dragged up the con and the merchant. <sighs> that motherfucking cocksigning son of a douchebag lapping numb cunt of a son who turned me into the real Krampus. I said angrily. I started snorting, and my vision turned red. I didn't like where my mind was going, so I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. In through the nose, out through the mouth. I thought in my head as I did my breathing exercise. I don't know how long I sat by that small creek just breathing. It could have been a minute, could have been a couple of hours. But my train of thought was broken when I heard a twig snap behind me. I decided to stay still, and let whoever or whatever was there come out and make the first move. When I heard the bushes rustling to my right, I took a deep breath of air and let my new senses take over. I smelled a strong sense of lilac, metal polish, and ozone. Whomever is there, I will not bring you harm unless you bring it to me. I stated with my eyes closed. How didn't thou know that we were here? Thou back is turned to us. A feminine voice said. I could hear you and smell you, child. May I ask as to why you sought to sneak up on me? I asked the female, still with my eyes closed and my back turned, focusing on the powers that Krampus possesses. Thou art a strange creature. Prithee, what is thy name? The strange female asked. Standing up, I finally turned around and opened my eyes, and standing just a few feet away from me is a dark blue female with a muzzle of a horse, large eyes, wings, and a horn. My name is Krampus. I said, smiling, making sure my razor-sharp teeth stayed hidden. And pray tell, what is your name, lass? I asked even, though I already had a good idea of who she was. Thy name is Princess Luna, Princess of the Moon and Night. She said. What type of being are you? You have the horns and hoofs of a ram, but you don't look like a ram. She asked. I am a being known as a sadder half-man, half-goat. I said. And pray tell, what are you? I asked. Thy am an alicorn. Dost thou not already know that? She asked, cocking her head to the side. I have never heard of your species before, though I have met many different species. You say you control the moon, I am the protector of the innocents, and I punish those who have lost faith in family, friends, and all that is good. I said, hoping to gain her trust. Really? She asked skeptically. Then thou shalt come with us to talk with mine sister, then we will decide what to do with thee. She said, leaving no room for rebuttal. I just nodded and slowly walked beside her as we headed to wherever her sister was. Although, I had a really good idea that we were headed to the castle of the two sisters. Very interesting. I'm starting to think that the old man from that booth is Discord, but who knows, could be anyone. Kinda surprised as well with the time period. Anyways, let's get on to our Justice Bringers of Donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkseid, and only one thing. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rowland, Crazy Color 557, Stu Hex, Will, Omicron Library, Chris, Twinkie, Dospo, Delta Omega, Jack Hadge, Runesath9852, Mad Matt Stan, Leslie Prickett, Drake Love Dragon, Hunter Norman, Stephen Bingham, Line God 12, Sorcerer Constantine, Hudzaza, Convair, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.